Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions. Hello, I'm Lori Steiner. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we'll hold a healthy debate about the best way to boost your well-being. Then, fraud takes many forms. We'll offer assistance to avoid being a victim. Down in the mouth, we'll help you begin to grin again. Plus, Ohio has always had a pivotal place in past presidential politics. We'll preview an exhibit that examines our important role. And we'll advise you on how to opt for the appropriate attorney for your Act Three. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for golden opportunities. Here's a challenge for you. How do you add onto a hospital without taking up more land? Metro Health met that challenge and more just by looking up. Walter Jones and Dr. Jeff Claridge have joined us in the Metro Health studio to explain. Walter is the Senior Vice President of Campus Transformation, and Dr. Claridge is the Director of the Division of Trauma, Critical Care, and Burns. I welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Walter, let's start with you. Sure. And when you were planning this expansion, not only expanding, but you had to deal with winter weather. Why is that? Well, we had done some assessment of our campus some years ago, and we knew the, some of the vulnerabilities that we had on the campus. That was actually well demonstrated, unfortunately. Um, in the winters of like January 14 and January 13, which uh, I think many people around here may remember. Um, <laughs> just a little. Just a little. <laughs> um, we had some uh, serious issues that arose out of, out of those winters. Uh, we have hardened our shell and our campus uh, after those times, but one of the things we did realize is that our most critical patients really needed to have a much safer, more stable environment permanently to, to reside in. Okay. So that's when we decided that we needed to um, uh, build a new critical care pavilion for them. How about the Republican convention? Have anything to do with it happening right now? Well, that actually, <laughs> that actually gave us a catalyst for the timeline. Uh, of the other elements that, that, uh, that we knew, we were going to have a surge in the, uh, the local population of 40 or 50,000 projected people. The hospital needed um, uh, space for possible uh, surge of patients. So we needed additional space as well for that. And then as part of our ongoing studies, uh, we knew that the campus itself overall uh, needed to look at what it needed to do looking forward into the future in order to continue its, its service to the community. Okay, now you didn't use more land, so how did you reconfigure all of that building? So one of the things that we're fortunate in some of the planning, earlier planning that had been done here on the campus was our existing critical care pavilion, which houses our emergency trauma center and our surgical suites, was actually designed to vertically expand two patient floors. So we took advantage of that. The building was the youngest on campus, only 10 years old, and we took advantage of that, that structural capacity that it had. We added two, uh, um, two floors of, of patient rooms, 85 patient rooms, and expanded the mechanical floor on the, on the roof of the, of the existing building. Wow, okay. So Dr. Claridge, what qualifies somebody as a critical care patient? So critical care patients are the sickest of the sick or the most injured if they're trauma patients. They need constant monitoring. Uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, and they're, they're basically can be on the ventilators with breathing tubes and, and again, constant monitoring. Okay, so with that seriousness in mind, I guess, did you and the other medical staff and the, and the support staff have a chance to kind of get some, give some input into this new? We did, they, they uh, basically, it seems like a year ago even, that we started to meet and plan and we drew out the patient flows. Uh, we had numerous multidisciplinary meetings where everywhere from dietitians, pharmacy, cleaning staff, nurses, physicians, uh, respiratory therapists met often, <laughs> a lot of meetings to decide you know, what we needed to have in there and how things would work best, uh, what was necessary, what was not necessary, and really gave a lot of input over the past year uh, on this building. So once it was finished, how did you reintroduce the staff to the new area? Well, we're doing that now, and uh, we've had, uh, we have tours that, that are happening frequently. We want to make sure everyone's pretty comfortable and familiar with there. They've been, there have been rooms for simulations going on, uh, and again, there's tours all the time. So we, we hope that everyone, albeit a little bit nervous, 
going mm -hmm. to a new building. It's gorgeous space. The rooms are vast. Uh, and I think everyone's excited. It's kind of uh, getting a, a brand new building is a very good opportunity. Okay, so quickly, what's on the to-do list? Well, the to-do list is the, this gives us an opportunity to see what the future might hold for Metro Health campus-wide in, in general. So we're continuing to study what our needs are uh, forward to the, to the future, what we need to do on the main campus as well as other locations. We are expanding our outpatient uh, ambulatory um, uh, presence. We just added 700,000 square feet wow. to, the, um, to the organization. And we're trying to reach out to the community in ways that we can serve them better. Excellent. Metro Health is building on the great care that they provide by, well, building. <laughs> With projects like the new to Critical Care Pavilion, they're showing that change is healthy. My thanks to Walter and Dr. Claridge for joining us today. To learn more, call Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or visit their website, www.metrohealth.org. Next, pros at cons. But first, if you think the French poodle was first found in France, you're barking up the wrong tree. So where did this dog originally have its day? We'll sniff out the answer when we return. Hilltop Village Apartments is retirement living at its best. Residents enjoy a wide variety of activities and living services with all large first floor apartments, private screened in patios with beautiful park views, daily dining room meals, free laundry facilities, 24 hour staff and so much more. Enjoy safe, comfortable independence at a very affordable price. Call today for a tour and learn how you can get your first month's rent free. Hilltop Village Apartments, retirement living at its best. The French Poodle began as the Poodle Hund. Poodle, a German word meaning to splash in water, and Hund meaning dog or hound. While Germany began its breeding as a type of water dog, France standardized it. And thus, this Poodle Pup became France's national breed. We all think we're too smart to be conned, but the truth is hundreds of thousands of dollars are being swindled from seniors who sink their savings into uncertain investments. John Chapman is here to tell us a few cautionary tales and to wake us up to the warning signs. John is an investment fraud attorney with Chapman Attorneys at Law. Welcome to the show. Thank you, it's great to be here. So you say that seniors are, are particularly targeted in that, these kinds of scams. That's true. Most of our clients are folks 65 and over, I'd say. As practical pur purposes, I mean, a fraudster is looking for somebody with a pile of money. And usually folks in that age group are done working and they've assembled a bit of a nest egg. And so they're ripe for the picking, I'm afraid. Mm, that's too bad. So how does this con actually start with these folks? Well, con is the key. It's a <laughs> confidence game. And folks, engage the confidence of their victims. And sometimes that's, uh, um, sometimes that's simply by what's called an affinity fraud, that's sort of I'm like you, I share your values. We just finished a large case in Atlanta where the fraudster was actually a pastor of a church. Oh boy. Most of his victims, members of his congregation. Saddest thing in the world, and they trusted him implicitly as he fleeced them. Yeah. Other things like those free meal invitations you get? There's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> there's, there's many, uh, many come ons and, and, and often, and this is the insidious part, somebody you really trust, a friend or a neighbor, will say, there's this wonderful investment. I'm making lots of money. I couldn't be happier. There's a notorious Cleveland Ponzi schemer by the name of Joanne Schneider who's now in jail. And that was all word of mouth. That mm. Everybody said, it's great, I'm getting paid, I'm getting paid dividends, it, I couldn't be happier. But you know what? She was taking other investors' money to pay old investors, the classic Ponzi scheme. Right. And oh. so you can't rely on, on, on word of mouth opinion either. Well, so who do you trust? Well, you have to, first of all, you have to turn to unimpeachable sources of information and there's a lot on the internet. You can go to brokerage reporting services. One of them is called FINRA, F-I-N-R-A. There's a broker check. You want to see if the guy who's trying to sell you an investment is licensed. You want to see if he has a record. You want to see if other people have sued him. 
Um, you can just simply Google names, and sometimes all kinds of interesting information comes up. Yeah, that's true. Um, and you've got some tips for us to try to avoid being caught in the first place. Warning signs, mm -hmm. red flags that maybe you are being staked out for a fraud. If the fellow sitting across the table from you says, act now, I'm not sure this is going to be around next week, walk away. That's a clear warning sign. If he says, this is a new opportunity, back in the day it was only available to the Rockefellers, uh, the richest people in the country, but now it's available to you, walk away. No such thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just a matter of you listen to some spellbinder on the other side of the kitchen table and you basically don't understand what he's talking about or how you're going to make money on this scheme. If you don't understand, walk away. A proper investment will be accompanied by lots and lots of paperwork, piles of what are called offering materials or prospectuses. If he's presenting an investment opportunity to you without providing you with those kinds of disclosure materials, watch out. Okay, this has been great tips to try to keep people safe. There are scams everywhere out there, all targeting your hard-earned savings. Follow John's tips to protect yourself. And for more help, give John a call. His number's next. Find out more by calling Chapman Attorneys at Law at 216-241-8172 or click to www.johnschapman.com. Next, stories of smiles restored. Looking for places to go, things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. The rules for Medicaid are changing. Find out how they affect you at a free seminar presented by the law offices of Salman, Steiner, and Pick. The seminar will take place Monday, August 8th at 7 p.m. at the Holiday Inn Rockside, again on Tuesday, August 9th at 1 p.m. at the Doubletree Beachwood, and a final time on Wednesday, August 10th at 2 p.m. at the Westlake Recreation Center. To find out more or to reserve your seat, call 1-888-236-5173. Time's up. That's what Jane Mayers was thinking after waiting quite a few years for the right time to transform her smile. She decided the time was now, so she wasted no time in seeing Dennis Steve Marsh, and they're both here to tell her tale. So welcome both of you to the show. Oh, thanks, Lori. So Jane, what made you want to make over your smile? Through years of brushing my teeth, I brushed them so hard that I had started brushing the enamel off. Uh-oh. And um, I had also, a long time ago, had to chip my tooth by chewing on a pencil. Um, and that was bonded. So as years went by, it just kept getting discolored and discolored. And I had like two pits in the front of my teeth. Mm. And um, every time I would go to brush my teeth, I'd be like, You'd this is an ugly smile. Yeah. So what made now the time? Dr. Marsh, I've been a patient of his for 20 some years, maybe even 30. Yeah. Um, <laughs> long we time. don't go back that far. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he encouraged me for a long time. He was very patient with me. And um, I finally decided to do it after um, I was nervous about the pain and what it was going to entail. But um, it was the best thing I've ever done. It was great. Mm -hmm. I decided I have to do it. I can't stand my smile anymore. And it also was at a point where I probably wasn't going to have a choice, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to make you do it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so when Jane was ready for that redo, after all those years, what did you do? Well, first of all, with Jane, she presents so nicely. And Jane didn't mention she's also a principal, right? A director. Director. Uh, and she deals with kids and people and parents all the time. So a smile is very important to her. So we talked about, Jane, here's what we can do. Here are the options. And again, like we've talked before, it's important that we're on the same page, that mm -hmm. she knows what we can do what time is, is going to take the finances involved. And then we sat around, we planned it out, and then we were able to do it with some porcelain veneers. And we can show some befores and afters. Yeah, show us what was involved. So this is what Jane came in with. And I had mentioned, that Jane had mentioned, she had actually brushed so hard that she was actually through the enamel. And what you're seeing there is the dent. And the dent is the under, under material of our tooth. The tooth, that part of the tooth tends to be yellow. It seems it tends to be discolored. So you can see the chip on her right. And in Jane's case, because there wasn't any decay, because she had taken such good care of her teeth, we were able to use porcelain veneers. And we decided to use six porcelain veneers. 
And again, in this case, all we're really doing is covering the front surface and wrapping over the edge. So where the chip was, the chip is now gone. The tooth is now much stronger. So in terms of when it was time to do it, it was about time because mm -hmm. the teeth had started to show some cracking. So the veneers not only look better, and again, Jane wanted something brighter, but it also gave her this beautiful smile. And there you see a full face, if you will, of Jane before and after. Uh, you can even see the light in her eyes is a little different in that after picture, yes. and that's what we were trying to achieve with Jane. All right, looks great. So how do you how do you feel about your new smile? I feel great, and every time I walk past a mirror, I'm always right up there, <laughs> smiling. You know, <laughs> look um, at yourself, and you're happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. My mom said something um, that was interesting after I got it done, and she goes, "Oh, there's that smile back." Uh, that, there's that smile there's back. That smile back. And I think even her son and husband were on her in her court, so to speak. Very. Everyone was super happy, and I'm happy. That's and I great. even took advantage of it, and he always texts to see how you're doing after procedures mm -hmm. or calls. Well, I put your number in my phone, and now I'm taking pictures and saying, yeah. zoom in on this smile. When she was at the championship uh, <laughs> parade, she sent uh, pictures of the championship parade. Oh, okay, you took some selfies there <laughs> with a big a smile. She did a nice yeah. thing on Angie's list and spoke uh, nicely about us. So mm. uh, she's been a delight to work with. And after all these years of being a patient, it's really been gratifying for us as well. That's great. His practice, though, is, it's like being in a family. It's very welcoming, mm -hmm. and everybody's super happy when all the procedures are done, and it's just a comfortable, comfortable place. Thanks, Thank you. Jane. Thank all right. you. All right. As Jane found out, there's no time like the present to give yourself the present of a beautiful smile. My thanks to Jane and Steve for bringing a smile to our faces with this great story. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440 Four six one one zero zero three, or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com. Next, power and politics. It's time to get up and go. An exercise segment on golden opportunities. Hello everybody, it's Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness and today we're here to show you how to work the shoulder muscles, but more importantly than the shoulder muscles, the trap muscles which aid our neck in moving all different directions when we're driving or even sitting at the ballpark watching the game. You ready to go? I don't know. I don't know. Exactly, you already got it. What we're going to do here is we're going to stand on the center of the band. Okay, we want to make sure there's a nice amount of tension between our foot and our hand. All we're going to do is maintain good posture, make sure you breathe, but we're going to bring the shoulders to our ears and then back down. Your arms should stay straight throughout the whole movement. Just squeeze your neck and look forward, okay? Raise your shoulders as high as you can, as if you're saying, I don't know. I don't know. How you feeling? I don't know. I don't know, all right. All right, we're looking for 12 to 15 repetitions here, at least three to four sets, everybody. And now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 6105 Parkland Boulevard, Suite 140, Mayfield Heights, Ohio, 44124. The Republican National Convention may have left town, but there's still plenty of power and politics here in Cleveland. And you can find it at the History Center at the Western Reserve Historical Society. Eric Rivett is the curator of this exhibit, which focuses on Cleveland's impact on presidential politics. So welcome to the show. Pleasure to be here. This was really nice timing. Now, did you you know, plan the exhibit to correspond with the RNC? Well, historically, we've tried to do an exhibit every year there's a presidential election. But this year, you know, with the political buzz in the city, we decided to go all out. Okay. Uh, power and politics is uh, seven galleries, about 5,000 square feet. Boy. And you'll see exhibits on topics like uh, Ohio's presidents, the presidents from Ohio, political fashion, the two previous RNCs that came to the city, and uh, also the 1896 election, which is usually considered to be the first real modern presidential campaign. Okay, well, let's start with that election then. How did the change happen? Sure. So the Republican candidate was William McKinley from Ohio, and his campaign was by and large managed by a Clevelander named Marcus Hanna. And if I was going to run for office prior to 1896, I would really not do anything until a couple of months before the campaign, uh, before the, uh, the national convention. I would try to win my state, a few states around me. Then when the convention came, you had several what they called favored sons that would really duke mm. it out for the nomination. Mm -hmm. McKinley and Hanna, uh, Hanna started campaigning almost two years ahead of time. So by the time the convention came around, they had already locked down national support and he won uh, the nomination overwhelmingly on the first ballot. Wow. It also changed campaign financing, right? It did, yeah. So again, prior to 1896, if you wanted to run for office, you would go to sitting politicians in your party and basically ask them to give you part of their salary, which 
may or may not have worked. <laughs> Hannah went. Thing. Uh, all right. So <laughs> Hannah went outside the political sphere, and he went to businessmen, and he raised more than three million dollars in 1896, uh, which was about five or six times what the Democratic candidate raised. So they had they had money to burn. Okay. So talk about a few of the other galleries that you're showing. Sure. We have a gallery dedicated to Abraham Lincoln. We have uh, some real treasures in our collection of, of Lincoln uh, memorabilia, including a, a life mask, which is a bronze mask and hands mm. that were uh, molded from life. We have uh, a gallery about the, the eight uh, Ohio presidents. We have a small gallery dedicated to the, pr to the two previous RNCs in 1924 and 1936 as well. And what was, why was Cle Cleveland chosen for those two particular Sure, well, 1924, the big selling point was a uh, public auditorium had just opened a oh, year okay. or two before. So it was the largest auditorium of its kind in the country. It could hold more than 11,000 people, and, and it was a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. uh, 1936, Cleveland, uh, Cleveland was a really popular place to be because you also had the Great Lakes Exposition going on. Oh, so it was a popular right. plan. Okay. And as you, we had a picture of the application up there. I guess it was really small compared to today. Yeah, amazingly, we have one the original copy of the application to the RNC, and it, it's it's maybe 30 pages long. And the application for the this year's uh, RNC would, would fill a house, probably. Oh, jeez. Yeah. All right, well, then there was the fashions, right? Absolutely, yeah. We have a, a very large polit uh, a garment collection. We have about 29 pieces on display that includes uh, campaign wear, dating all the way back to James Garfield and all the way through today, through the present campaign. We have uh, clothing that was worn by first ladies, including Nancy Reagan, uh, Ida McKinley, Lucretia Garfield. And then we have several gowns that were worn to presidential inaugurations, including Abraham Lincoln, uh, Ulysses S. Grant, and uh, Dwight Eisenhower. Wow. Sounds like a, a great exhibit. We hope so. We gotta yeah. get there. This is a vast and amazing exhibit that will continue to be on display through January 2017. But why wait? Make plans now to see power in politics. My thanks to Eric for a winning preview of this exhibition. Thank you. For more information, call the Western Reserve Historical Society at 216-721-5722 or log on to www.wrhs.org. Next, the right attorney for a certain age. Let's all wake up to better health. Walk, run, fly. Find a partner, an ally, a Metro Health doctor who will listen as long as it takes so you can celebrate every day by living it your way. Get your physical, checkup, regular screening at Metro Health and wake up every day to better health. Change is healthy. Do you know what kind of an attorney you might need to see for your Act 3 planning, retirement and beyond? Most people don't, but they do need to plan. We meet with clients all the time who come in thinking that they need to protect assets from the nursing home, and they find out that they actually need new wills, trusts, and powers of attorney, or the other way around. Here to give us some Act 3 planning tips is my law partner, Mike Solomon. Hi, Lori. So welcome back to the show. So what are some of the options for planning with an attorney for your Act 3? Well, you know, for Act 3, you, you want to do estate planning, estate planning and long-term care planning. Those are basically the two issues. Sometimes it's one, sometimes the other, or, or it could be both. Okay, well, let's talk about those starting with estate planning. Well, estate planning, as you know, is kind of sitting down, figure out what's going to happen with your, your assets and, and how they go to your family if you retire or you're disabled or you pass away. So that's, that's an important uh, part of it. Mm -hmm. You, you, know, you want to get your legal affairs, your financial affairs in order so that you, know, you can pass your assets along that you've accumulated during life to your family at the least tax cost, financial cost, and also the emotional cost of it. So that's, that's important. So you need to sit down maybe with the family, discuss any you know, issues that might be out there, and then most importantly, you need to think about the documents. And typically, it's a will. Everyone needs a will. Mm -hmm. Trust, sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't, but that's another document. A uh, durable power of attorney, sometimes called a financial power of attorney, that you know, important to, uh, to so people can handle your finances while you're alive. Healthcare power and living will. So you should look at all of those things and, and plan around them. Okay. Well, then what about long-term care planning? Okay. Well, long-term care planning is also an important thing, obviously, and and um, so you need to uh, sit down and focus on what would happen if if uh, if you had to go into long-term care or medical treatment. You did medical treatment, and that involves. Uh, sometimes estate planning and sometimes long-term care planning work together. Sometimes they're separately. 
Uh, and you need to look at certain programs such as uh, VA and Medicaid, which are the only government programs that pay for long-term care costs if you want home care or maybe assisted living and, of course, a long-term care facility. So you want to look at those. But as we've talked about on the show, those are very complicated. The rules have changed recently, we've talked about a few weeks ago. And you, if you want to be able to qualify for those programs, you have to satisfy complicated net worth rules and income rules. You really need to sit down with an attorney who does that sort of planning if you want to do that uh, planning to, to take advantage of those programs. Okay, so how do we find an attorney who can help us with all of these things? Well, the best way I think to find one is you know talk with you know, family members and friends and neighbors and see who they used. That's one way to do it. That's a fairly traditional way. Uh, the other thing to do is to find an attorney that when you do find them, interview them, make sure that they, you know, they're, they're someone you can work with, that the personalities click and that mm -hmm. they, they're competent in their area and they're working for you to get your goals. And you might look, uh, there are a lot of certifications out there right now. For example, there's an elder law certification, both at a federal level and a state level. There is a, there's a certification for estate planning and probate and trust work that's under Ohio law. Uh, there's a special certification for, uh, for federal, for VA benefits. So look at all those sorts of things. And then finally, you know, online is a big thing now, of course. Mm -hmm. People go online to look for attorneys. There are a lot of websites like Avo and Fine Law and uh, Martindale Hubble, uh, you know, that they give rankings of attorneys. So that's another place to go if you're looking. All right, great tips. Mike is right. This is really important planning, and you need to leave it to the pros. Find the best help an attorney to plan for your Act 3 with his tips. For more detailed information, pick up this month's issue of Boomer and Beyond magazine or call Mike at the number that's next. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. We're preempted for the next four weeks so you can enjoy amazing sports program like the Summer Olympics in Rio. But be sure to mark your calendar for August 28th when we return and help you avoid high blood pressure, introduce you to a senior concierge, identify home caregiver issues, warn you about the kitty tax, and offer assistance as you make strides to a healthy weight. But until then, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. If you'd like to join our kitchen conversation, visit our website, www.goldenopportunities.tv. Like us on Facebook. Call us at 440-742-GO-TV or email us at kitchen at goldenopportunities.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.